That's awesome. Who um who has been beta testing the the game so far? Is it just the the main team? Yeah. Um. Good question. So I mean, internally, we've been playing the game for I'd say over a year. You know, from to where it was a blank canvas up until it's been fully developed now. Um, we have a lot of developers who have spent you know like hundreds if not thousands of hours on the game but since it's done early access so i mean i'm sorry since we launched early access um you know we're getting really good feedback from the the early access pass holders and so that's been super beneficial luckily we haven't really encountered um any major you know errors or flaws but when we do we fix them uh, really quickly and it's uh, been great to see the community's feedback yeah, that's awesome. So it, it sounds like you're able to do something that you're not able to do in a lot of games where it's not class-locked items, right? It seems like something unique to me. Yeah, the weapons are interchangeable in between uh, each of the characters. So, like, some of the armor and stuff like that is individualized, but, like, the weapons are interchangeable. So you can really – once you find, like, your gameplay that really works out well for you um, – you know, you can do that. And, like, certain strategies work well when you're playing on your own versus when you're playing with others. Like, you know, if you're on your own, that's that's generally the way I've been doing it and seeing some one-on-one players. But if you're going through, like, on a party of six or more, that's where you really want to balance out. I was th- I was curious. You guys don't have an archer? I'm kind of hurt about that, man. I, uh, I'm usually a fiend for the archer class. You know, not yet right now. We've We just launched with those first four characters. <laughs> But right now, it's just uh, those kind of up close weapons. We there we have talked pretty extensively about what that would look like for long range kind of destruction as we move into global launch. But it's definitely something that's been brought up and discussed on the team. That's awesome. I, I like the the word used there. Not yet. Open to it. Um, are you guys going to look into implementing different NFTs outside of your own ecosystem? What do you mean? So. For example, Monster Suit Roo, would there be able to, uh, would, would there be a, a, a way to bridge those two together? Like, how is the game reading the, the tokens? Um, is there, like, a patch, for for lack of a better word? I'm not very technical when it comes to games. But is there a way that you could add something like that? Maybe a, a weapon or a class-specific armor that you could add on from other collections? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're talking, so there's like a couple ways we can answer. Short answer is yeah, there's like a ton more different types of NFTs and armors and stuff like that that we're going to add into the game. Some of it's only going to be available during early access launch. That way, when if people bought a pass, like they're getting something unique as they play. As we go forward, though, in a global launch, we're going to add some other types and, you know, they're going to have their own kind of features and rarities and so on and so forth. But what you're talking about is really cool because it's like strategic partnerships. How do we bring in other right. cool communities like yourself and like incorporate their stuff into the game? And that's what we're doing right now. Um, it's not just the kind of promotion, talk about the game, talk about blockchain, talk about metaverse stuff. But it's like, hey, let's talk to other cool communities really engaged and let's think about cool ways we could get them involved in big time in the future. So, you know, you've got some cool characters. A lot of them look like they'd fit well in the big time. And as we get closer to global launch and even through global launch, we definitely want to bring in partnerships like you guys. Yeah, I think so overall. I'm kind of curious because uh, when you talk about these different NFTs and how we can use them, I think it's a very innovative way of, of using it. Uh, but you mostly mentioned stuff of only um, making new NFTs. Is there a sort of burn mechanism somewhere in this process as well? Yeah, there's there's a couple uh, to make sure that the supply doesn't get totally out. So, for example, when you upgrade them, it inherently kind of burns the lower the lower level of it. So let's you know hypothetically, let's say you get a level one sword or something like that, and you upgrade it to level two. Well, there's no longer a level one inside the game. Similar goes to the tokens. When you find the tokens, there is a fixed supply inside the game, but even they get burned as you use them inside the game and unlock certain features. Um, but there are we also release like quantity levels for each of them. There's only 600,000 space as well, and all those things are kind of injected into the game over the course of several years. It would be easy to kind of think from the way I'm describing it that there's a lot of NFTs, but there are not a lot of NFTs. They're they're actually pretty rare, and you got to play it a lot to like find them, especially during regular gameplay. So the supply generally is is a little bit lower than than what you've been seeing, 
um, the the drop rate has been way higher for the gold pass holders. Yeah, I, I like some of those points. I, I just the only thing is the demand side with the current economic uh, environment is kind of iffy. Uh, so I think long term, if this game, I mean, I really think it's a great game. So I think it's honestly one of the best shots of going like mainstream. So I I, I see that long term it could have great great demand. Uh, but yeah, the only concern of mine is is just a great supply of of land. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of balancing. I'll tell you, there, there's a bunch of things. Um, you can look at our marketplace right now, and you can see some serious stability, particularly for those passes. Um, you know, the floor price is, has really hasn't gone down, even though the uh, the the access period for gold passes has is already one fourth of the way done. You know of their exclusive period is already done. You know, those prices have continued to stay high. Um, it's interesting to see how the users have kind of responded to it. And, but just broadly speaking, you're right. If we make a really crappy game, nobody's going to care about any of this stuff. So that's why we really brought in some of the best people in the business to put together this game. And uh, if you just check out our team, we can talk about our team if you want. Um, it's probably the best in the business that's out there. Definitely the best among blockchain games that are out there. So we're very much committed to being a game first and a good game that people enjoy. All right. As a game designer myself, I wanted to know what has been the most challenging like issue that you guys had building a game based on NFTs on the blockchain. So in terms of the game and, uh, and, and bringing it to launch personally, the hardest thing for me was trying to get like hardcore gamers to understand why there should be blockchain. Because a lot of like hardcore PC gamers really hate it. And they were like, why? It seems like a Ponzi scheme. Uh, I saw somebody make a YouTube video about this and they said I should hate it. And uh, that's been pretty rough. In terms of the actual development of the game, I mean, this is my first time working with a game company. And I would hate to detract from the work that the devs did. But making a game is really hard. We've had, we have about 80 people in the game, or excuse me, full time at big time. And it's, you know, it's still taken us over two years to get to this point. There's a lot of stuff in here and we couldn't just repeat what's already out there. You got to innovate, you got to do something new and you got to do it in a way that's accessible to a lot of people. So how do you kind of balance all of those things that it's new and accessible and cool at the same time? But uh, if I had to say one thing that was hard, probably hardest for them to come up with in terms of the gameplay I think tastefully incorporating NFTs into it is probably the hardest part. That's probably the one that we still talk about the most to make sure as many people as possible can enjoy this. Yo, how's it going, everyone? Hope you're all having a good day. Had a question about your marketplace. So I understand that Big Time have their own marketplace and you guys do run on Ethereum. Have you looked into Layer 2 solutions for the marketplace? And will your marketplace be able to be integrated into other marketplaces. Uh, for example, Fish was actually talking about GameStop earlier. So I'm curious whether that's something potential we could look at launching on the IMX marketplace and be essentially cross-marketplace listed. Um, our marketplace is not on Ethereum. It's, uh, it's, an, it's off-chain. Uh, we have a patented technology called The Vault, which takes all the marketplace transactions in the game off-chain. You know, imagine playing Fortnite, and they said, to buy this skin, you're going to have to pay a $30 gas fee. Well, that just doesn't sit well with anyone, especially since we're trying to onboard you know, traditional gamers. So that's the decision for that. So all of our transactions happen off-chain, and you can pay in fiat, you can pay in Ethereum, you can pay in Solana, you can pay in our token when it comes out. You know, the limits, there is none. Um, but furthering the, the facts on our own marketplace, since everything's off-chain, it allows you to bring the NFTs you collect in-game onto any chain that you want. Um, so if you want to bring them and sell them on OpenSea, you can. If you want to bring them and sell them on, you know, Magic Eden, Solana's uh, native marketplace, you can. Exactly, yeah. And, and I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that there's a very specific other reason why we did that, not just to avoid the gas fees, but also our marketplace is going to be accessible with credit cards. So you don't need to set up a wallet or anything like that to buy an NFT or a skin. And, you know, for, for the majority of users who are not going to be blockchain savvy, don't want to set up a wallet, they think it's weird, or they're like younger kids and their parents won't let them. Well, 
they already feel comfortable spending their, their money on like skins and Fortnite. Well, they should have a similar buying experience inside the marketplace in big time. So it's supposed to look a little bit more like that. Hello, guys. Do you hear me? Yeah, all good. Yeah, we can yeah go. so first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming up here. I've been following the project for a while now. Uh, and I've seen some released footage of the gameplay, and it looks really good. Um, but I, I have a question regarding the actual gameplay, where there is now a revolutionary game where you can make money of it. How will you battle people that try to explode this by maybe creating bots, several accounts, and so on? Because if you have a server filled with many bots, it maybe destroys the community, and so on. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't go into all the details for for fear of tipping our hands too much. But yes, like there are a ton of uh, like anti cheating mechanisms inside of both the game and the marketplace. Broadly speaking, it it falls into a couple categories of heuristics um, where there are normal bounds of human behavior for the way you should be able to operate inside of the game. And if you go way outside of that, then it's like a cue for us to look more and to think, is this a human playing versus is this a bot playing? When you have a PVE type game, which is what big time is, it's easier to implement those heuristics as opposed to a PVP type game where there's interaction of different types of players and, you know, different skill levels. So, you know, what may you may think is like cheating or playing a bot may actually just be somebody who's far more skilled. In a PvE game, it's much easier to detect that. So we do have these systems in place. Um, I was just wondering, for big time, I, I um, participated in, I think it was the first sale on um, Binance for the tickets. I'm just wondering, can they be moved from Binance to your marketplace? Because I was having trouble trying to do that originally. Are, are you talking about the... Um... Yeah, the early access pass, sorry. The Jade um, and all that. Oh, okay. So you will be able to do that. Honestly, if you watch the the video for the gold pass, how to redeem it, yeah. um, it's going to be a very similar process. Right, Redemption okay. is going to start about a week before the gold pass, or excuse me, a week before you can actually access it to okay. deal with that issue you're right now. Because if you're like, crap, I got a jade pass, I, I can't get it to connect, Binance decided to explode again and shut down all of its servers because that's what they do, um, yeah. there's going to time for you to fix it and it's about a week before you'd be able to play but in the short uh, term check out the video for the gold pass uh, perfect thanks for that 